Hi everybody and warm welcome to Hobby Starter, a dedicated channel that shows you all the all the tips and tricks about new crafts that you may have started to want to pick up and you know uh, over on our sister channel Sewing Street, Jewelry Maker, Hobby Maker um, we've all been doing it a while and sometimes we take for granted that people know all the words, the lingo, the techniques and things like that so we thought why not start a channel that's dedicated to taking everything back to basics and starting from the very beginning so if you are thinking about making jewelry for example and chain mail appeals to you as a look how do you go about doing it? Lovely Laura's here, Laura Hi. Binding's here from Jewelry Maker, you alright? Yeah good Good to see you. Now you've been jewelry making for a long, long time. Haven't Very you? long time. We yeah. don't talk about it. Okay. <laughs> we don't go there. Um, what's your favourite type of jewelry making? Though? So I love doing chain mail. So I love the fact that you can. It's very classic. It's very achievable. Everybody could sit in a room and come out with identical pieces. Is it very kind of repetitious? Yeah, it is, and uh, you know, it's very repetitive. But also, I love that you can fuse different weaves together. Right. So I like to kind of take do two different weaves and bring them together to one. So you can have a lot of fun with it as well. And also it's really fluid, isn't it? Yes, yeah, definitely. I and mean, chain mail goes back to like um, olden days of armor yeah, and that sort of thing. Yeah, it was armor. It's also been used as shark suits as well, like oh, a, yeah. a protective layer of shark suits, um, armor, chain mail goes underneath because again, it's very hard when you've got the, the interlocking rings you know, it would be very protective. Yeah, so if ever you come across a shark, wear yourself a yeah. chain mail bracelet and you should be all right. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, it'll definitely help. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I mentioned repetition earlier on. It's basically a, a case of twisting links and twisting them back together again, mm -hmm. in yeah. a nutshell, isn't it? Effectively, yeah. I mean, there's, there's certain things we have to consider, but what I'm gonna show you today is literally that, you know, at the end of the day, linking one ch jump ring into another jump ring is chain mail. Yeah. It's making a chain, but it is called, it's classed as chain mail. So, you know, even just doing that, is your simple start of chain mail. So I mean, maybe you go back to your childhood, I can remember um, doing paper chains for yeah. Christmas and that sort of thing, linking paper together. Yeah. Well, it's the same sort of thing, but with metal. And talking of the metal, is there a certain type of metal that you use? So we, jump rings are generally made out of wire um, and they tend to be made, they, they can be made out of aluminium wire, they can be made out of stainless steel, um, but generally we tend to use sort of wire, plated wire. Um, and there is kind of a minimum, so, Chainmail jump rings are normally done with a minimum of a 0.8 gauge wire right. um, or a one mil is an ideal okay. sort of gauge. Um, and it's just because you need it to be strong enough to be able to open and close and to lock and be stable. Because right. obviously if it's too thin, it's not going to hold its shape. The other thing to remember is that you're going to, um, I'll talk very briefly about it in a moment, is you have something called the aspect ratio. So you do need specific size jump rings right but the gauge is also quite important but if you go by a generic one mil most jump rings that arrive are one mils most that you can buy for chain mailing are one mil and, and just looking at some of the finished items we've got here necklaces bracelets as well they mm -hmm. are gorgeous they really are and of course if you like the idea of taking this up as a hobby at the end of the show when we've said goodbye you can always go to our channel jewelry maker uh, which you'll find on, find on sky and also on freeview on sky it's 674 and on freeview it's channel 70 72. So you can go there anytime and watch uh, demonstrations live. Sometimes you can watch shows back as well and get lots of hints and tips on not just chain mail, but any type of jewelry mm. making that takes your fancy. Okay, so we've bought our chain mail links from yeah. Jewelry Maker's website, jewelrymaker.com. What do we do first? So there's a few things to consider when you're buying your, your chain mail jump rings. Um, so, you know, they'll come in sort of, um, you'll get them in amounts of about 200 generally when we're buying them from uh, Jewelry Maker and they will have different sizes. And this goes back to what I talked about with the aspect ratio. So you can go from sort of a, th so what I'm gonna mention as well, is when I say this, I'm referring to the inside diameter of jump ring. Oh, okay. So if you say, for example, you've got a jump ring here on my board, you'll see that you've got the inside and the outside. Mm -hmm. So just say, for example, this one here. So when I mention a size, I'm talking about the size on the inside of that jump ring, okay. not the outside. Right. So you'll often see, if you're looking for jump rings, and they'll often refer to an ID, which is inner diameter, mm -hmm. or an OD, which is outer diameter. Gotcha. And that does make a difference because there are some weaves that are specific to certain sizes mm -hmm. there are some that are nice and generic and you can use any size jump ring with which is what we're going to do today and looking at what you've got in front of you it, it seems that you don't really need much in the way of tools really literally 
two pairs of pliers. That's it. And the pliers, again, <laughs> they do need to be chain nose pliers or flat pliers. Um, so round nose pliers won't be any good. They do need to have a flat surface. Um, but you need two just to be able to open and close your jump rings. Mm -hmm. But that's all you need. So you can get started just for a few pounds? Literally, really. yeah. I mean, we, we've had these in deals. Um, these are very sort of, they're only about four or five pound, I think they're not very expensive. Um, and are the jump rings expensive or not really? No, not no? at all, no. Um, we tend to do them in um, a mixture of sizes as well, which is great. So you can get them in bundles where you'll get like a three mil, a, a six mil say, uh, and a seven mil. Um, and again, I'm referencing the inside diameter when I say that. Um, so yeah, again, having the size can be key to certain weaves. Mm -hmm. And that might be something that we might explore a bit further down the line, but the weaves that we're gonna kind of do are gonna be nice and simple and can be done with any size jump okay. ring. Okay, now we're gonna show you in the next few minutes, um, three different types of weave, uh, so that it gives you a really good idea and a good place to start. I mean, what's the best type of, uh, weave to start with for someone that's never done it before. So getting started, I think getting comfortable with opening and closing your jump rings. And again, another thing that's really, really key is preparation. Right. So preparing your jump rings. So, you know, we have to make sure to open and close and we'll go over that in a moment. Um, but we're gonna be, um, yeah, we're it's just that link, getting used to it, getting used to closing them properly, opening them, and getting that join nice and close. So when you say preparing, you mean what, getting the right colours, getting the right sizes? So when in I the say right preparing, place. yeah, you need open and close jump rings. So a lot of the time, if you see on my board here, I've got a pile of jump rings that have been opened yep. and a couple that are closed. Um, and that's quite key. There are some weaves where we'll say you need, say, 50% open and 50% closed. Mm -hmm. And with that, it's best that you will have a pile of open jump rings. Right, rather and than then doing them one at a time. Yeah, yeah. because once you you start to create that chain you want to just be able to pick up a jump ring pick up a good, jump ring you don't want to have to stop open and close some more and then do it again see so that's why we're doing this I wouldn't have thought of doing that I've yeah. done it one at a time which is laborious so yeah. doing it in it's advance. time saving yeah, and there yeah. is things with chainmail that we call speed weaving so there are a couple of ways that we can kind of and I'll show you a sample of that with the two and two okay um, and it's really quick and easy but it just saves time and speeds the steps up. So you're going to show us two and two first, yeah? Um, so I'll show you the one in one, one, in one. and right. then two and two is just a variation okay. of it. So I'll just talk about opening and closing your jump rings. Now, just for sort of um, demo purposes, I've got large aluminium jump rings. Now these are great for your sort of, um, just, just for demoing. There are some weaves, but I wouldn't tend to use these within my chainmail piece. These are my demo sort of sizes. Right. These um, next to it, just to show in comparison, these are seven mils. And are they more common in jewellery? These are probably the largest that we, we do at Jewellery Maker, and right. they're going to be the ones that will give, I mean, like I said, they're shown in a couple of the pieces that we've got here. Um, and, you know, they're great for like your Mobiuses, which again, we will show a bit later on. Um, and you're, you're one on one. So what I would say is, I'm just going to show you with these so you can see. So when I say preparing, you'll see when you get your jump rings, they'll sort of arrive. Um, you have them in a bag. They could, some can be linked together. Just for an example, you know, you can pour them out here and you'll see some will be open and some will be closed. Mm -hmm. But what's really important is when I say, oh, you might need to say 10 closed, 10 open. Don't just go, oh, well, I've poured out the closed one, so that's that part done. It's very important and hopefully I'll be able to show you. But this is, you saw me just pour it straight from the pack, so you'll be able to see what I mean. How do you, how do you know how many you'll need then? Are there like there patterns are, available for bracelets and necklaces? Um, and a lot of the time you kind of tend to work it out. So there are some that are again are specific. So say for example, a Byzantine link, that has 14 jump rings per link. Oh wow. So you can kind of work some of them okay. out. Some yeah. of them are a little bit of a I love trial and error. And links. I never yeah. realised there were that many in there. Though. And that's just in one link. Right, so if one. you imagine a bracelet, say it's got 20 links, that's you sort of over 200 jump rings. Mm -hmm. um, so just to show you here, it looks like it's closed, but if you look really carefully, it's very slightly off, only slightly, but it just basically means that you just need to take your jump ring, uh, your pliers, sorry, and just gently you see I'm just literally moving the plier mm -hmm. back and forth very slightly and that's actually so you can see it from above it's barely moving mm -hmm. but that's enough to make sure that's now aligned so that's really important if you're just adding a closed jump ring directly into your design because if there's even slightly open right. it can catch or it can actually open up. And so the ones that come closed already <coughs> could be just a little bit it's out of It's always line. worth checking right. them, yeah, because, I mean, if I look at this, you can see, again, with this one, I can see, this is probably a better example, actually. 
you can see oh, yeah. how yeah it's off how that one's just quite off so that could be the difference between success and failure it can just yeah you'll feel it as well so you know you want this to be nice and comfortable i wear chainmail quite a lot i've wear it on my um i've I got noticed. two bracelets here <laughs> um and you know you need it to be nice and comfortable and smooth against the skin if there's any kind of jump rings not open properly then it could catch mm -hmm. or it could scratch and okay. you don't want that so when i say make sure you've got your jump rings open and closed this is part of your preparation so i'm taking my jump ring I'm literally just opening a couple, I'll only do a few, um, and then I'm just making sure. So I won't do all of them because you don't need to watch me open and close jump rings, but that's what I mean by the opening and closing. So when it comes to actually making a one-in-one, -one, it really is as simple as take an open jump ring, add a closed jump ring. Mm -hmm. You start off by actually adding two closed jump rings. Okay. Okay. And then close that jump ring. Now, when I place this down, it's like one of those magic puzzles, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. And that is your one in one chain. Okay. That is literally all it is. And you would then pick up another jump ring. And this is where preparing helps. Don't use your hands, by the way. It's very easy to want to do this. Mm -hmm. Don't do that because you'll distort the jump rings. Right. And we'll talk again. I didn't mention about how to open the jump rings properly, but and I'll do that. It's important to twist it left to right yeah. rather than open and close it. As, as so, well. yeah, the way that, I sh that we showed how you should close it. To open it is the same, so taking your pliers, you just open it out. So you twist it rather than try and prise it apart. Yeah, you're, yeah. Not, you're not even twisting it, you're just kind of literally, almost like you're opening a door, you're just pulling it slightly, you know, both your hands, one's going forward, one's going yeah. backwards. Um, and then when you close it, again, you just, and you almost kind of do that a couple of times to get that alignment really nice and um, smooth. So and is, is that a technique that comes quite quickly and quite easily? Yeah, 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 definitely. And I'll always say, you know, if if you're sort of right or left-handed, you there's some sometimes it can affect it, but it just means that you just adapt it. Yeah. So if you're right-handed, you might find it easier to do it that way. If you're left-handed, you might find it easier to do it that mm. way. It really doesn't matter as long as you find a way that works for you. Okay. Um, that's the top tip I can always give anybody. Find a way that works for you. As long as you're getting the result, yeah, then that's, that's that the matters. best way to do it. Yeah, hundred percent. So I'm just going to take another open jump ring, attach it to that chain, take another closed jump ring, which I've accidentally opened. <laughs> <laughs> so there's my open jump ring. There's my closed. Pop it on and close. Simple. So as a starting point, if that's the first chain you make as a necklace or a bracelet, you could probably get it done in probably yeah. half an hour or something like that. Do you know what though? Yeah, it doesn't take long. And I will often use this as a finish. So again, open jump ring, add a close, pop it onto your closed. That's all you continue to do until you've got the length that you want. Now I often use this just to finish off my design. So I've got this piece here. Now, this is a two in one, so all I've done is added two and okay. then one. Yep, and again, yep. I'll show you that in a moment. But the, the weave itself is actually, let me move that for you to see. Um, so it's a box weave at the bottom, which is a variation of your Byzantine. Mm -hmm. And then I've got that as my main focus, but then I've just finished that chain off with a two in one. And the combination of the two looks really striking. And this is why I mean I like to mix weaves together and also it, it conserves it conserves your jump rings a little bit mm -hmm. because some weaves can be really jump ring heavy. You know, there's a lot of jump rings just in that one tiny section there. But I mean imagine if that was in sterling silver or yeah. if that was in white gold or even more platinum, that would be a small fortune. Absolutely. Presumably making jump ring jewellery is not that expensive. No, no, definitely not. And so and again there's like I said, there's ways to kind of stretch jump rings out a little yeah. bit. So I would do that as my section there and then one and one it here or one and two it. This whole piece is still completely handmade. And they do it, come in different colours. There's like yeah. a rose gold colour, there's <coughs> a yellow gold, gold colour yep. and can, a silver colour. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll use those when I do the Mobius to show you the different colours. Okay. So I'm just going to show you what I was talking about with the um, the two in one. Yep. You can do two in one, two in two. And just to explain briefly as well why it's called a one in one is literally because there's one jump ring in another jump ring. Mm -hmm. So one jump ring goes into one, so it's a one in one. If you're doing a two in one, there's two jump rings. Into the one. Into the one. Gotcha. So it literally it kind of says what it's it self explanatory. Yeah. A two in two is going to be two jump rings linked to two jump rings to two jump rings. Yeah. Um, so you'll find that a lot with um, patterns um, that it does explain it in the name. Don't get me wrong. There are some chainmail weaves that have got some extraordinary names mm -hmm. and that are no, not related in any way 
to so, where so the really, Japanese go. So really, once you start, start off with a one-in-one or a yeah. two-in-one, and then you can really take it as far as you uh -huh. want. If you fancy doing Byzantines and that sort of thing, being more adventurous down the road, you can do it. But everything you need to do this, we're not selling you anything on this no. uh, Hobby Starter channel. We're just giving you ideas. Yeah. But if you do want to go on to the Jewelry Maker website, jewelrymaker.com, you'll find all the jump rings there, all the tools that you could possibly need, any of the mats that you may well need as well are all there. But it's like a free workshop we do here at Hobby yeah. Starter in all sorts of different crafts. It's kind of to take the fear away as yeah. well, I think, because, you know, I I've deliberately didn't, I've got like a whole, <laughs> I've got, that's just one of a thousand boxes I've got at home with Chainmail. Um, and I could show really lovely elaborate designs, but it can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So by showing actually you can make beautiful jewellery with simple designs, yep. it shows that it's achievable as well, you know. Okay. Just get comfortable with the technique and then sort of work your way up from there. Okay. So I'm gonna talk about uh, the two in one, but I'm, also, I'm actually gonna do two in two because I think you can see the two in one is literally two in one. The two in two, I'm gonna show you a little quick speed weaving technically. So I'm gonna take an open jump ring and I'm gonna add on four <laughs> closed jump rings. Okay. And then I'm gonna just close this up. Now, if you're thinking of a two and two, everything is doubled. Mm -hmm. If you think of it like that, I'm doing a two and two, so I need everything to be doubled. Yep. So again, if we do our magic trick with this and lay this down, we've got two, one, and two. Right. So we need to double it. So we just simply take another jump ring, open, collect two here, and then just collect those two there. Oh. So you can see you've got sort of that shape. Yeah. Close that jump ring. And then again, when I place this down, it should go two, two, two. Oh, brilliant. So it's really quick and easy. That's yeah, kind of a it? nice, quick, easy way of doing that. And so again, if I take um, an open jump ring, this is where prep this is what I was talking about with the preparation. Yeah. Having those jump rings ready. So two Do you clothes. Know a lot of people that make this to sell. Uh, yeah, it's very popular is it? um, because it's great because I think it's very unisex and go you know, anybody can wear a lot of the chainmail weaves. My husband actually wears two weaves, two right. bracelets that I've made him in bare copper. Yeah. So he wears a Byzantine bracelet and a half Persian three in one bracelet. That sounds interesting. So yeah, and he went and you know, he's one of these, he's like, has to be like, I'm gonna make sure that I, it suits me, I'm a man man. And he's absolutely, he wears it all the time. So, Terrific. okay. You know, it's very versatile, I think, and you can break it up with gemstones if you want to. I love um, weaves that are components almost, mm. that you can break up into sections and add different things to. So I've got my open jump ring, I've got two. So again, I'm gonna take my open jump ring, exactly the same as we just did, pick up those two, pick up this two here and close. Mm -hmm. Just a little side note, that's a two in one. Right, <laughs> yeah. But if you want to double it up, you can simply take another jump ring and go through all four and close. See, until you see it done, it looks a little bit daunting. But when it's explained and, and shown, you know, very, very uh, steadily and, yeah. and slowly, it makes absolute sense. It does. And I'm going to show you this because it went wrong because <laughs> I went too quick. And it's good to show that because all that I did was I basically put it on in the wrong direction. So it can. You can make mistakes, but Chainmail shows you it. Yeah. Very obviously. It's like, that's not And right. also, it's a mistake that can be rectified. Because so you've easy. not you know, put anything permanent there. There's no permanent glue or anything like that. that nope. You literally undo, undo it. it. And that was because I rushed it. That's the honest answer. Pop it through. I think I put it through it the wrong direction. You just pop it through like that. Mm -hmm. So the secret is if it lies awkwardly, you've oh, done it, it probably again. in the wrong direction. So yeah. undo it and go back and do it in the other direction. Yeah, but this one's playing me up and wants to make me look silly. There we go, there we go. That's better. But you saw how easy that was for me to fix. Yeah. It's very obvious for you to see, and it goes to show as well, and this is very key, um, and I notice this whenever I teach chainmail, it's very easy when you've got a simple weave to make a mistake mm -hmm. um, because you get complacent. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, this is easy. I'm doing this, going along, going along. And then suddenly something like that happens. So it is easy to make a mistake. Do you find you kind of end up doing it almost subconsciously yeah. and you're watching TV at the same time? That's why I was saying, a... yeah, I sit in my studio. I've got um, a monitor and my laptop and I sort of watch a bit of TV and I'll just sit and make things. But 
if you lose or if you like I say get too um, comfortable you can make a silly mistake but nine times out of ten you can go back and fix it I always say just keep checking you saw how that jumped out at you yeah that's wrong do you, do you know what I think people get sometimes get a little bit wary of is that working with metal seems a little bit um it looks like it could be hard work mm. working with crochet wool or whatever is softer it's um yeah. kinder on the fingers or whatever but this is so so soft to actually yeah, use it's but so strong. easy absolutely so, easy. so and like i say it's very uh, it does um it shows you if you've made a mistake you can see it mm. so you're like okay i can go back and fix that and the great thing like you said about jump rings they're open and closable yeah so if you go wrong just go back catch it quick that's mm -hmm. the best tip i can say if you notice it, go back and fix it straight away because okay. it's trickier if you get further along. Now, before we started, you said to me, I'm going to show you the Mobius. I, I said, am. The Mobius. That's what? exactly so what I'm going to do. I've never heard of the Mobius before. Is that a type of link? or? So the Mobius is basically where sort of a, a jump ring goes inside. It's, uh, so it's almost like, um, I can't explain which. Yeah, that is a very good example of the Mobius. That's, a, that's actually three Mobiuses. Okay. Um, so the Mobius is, yeah, basically where they almost intertwine. Um, and if you see the jump rings on the side. Is it a bit like a rope chain? Can be, yeah. Okay. So if you look on the sides, you can see the jump rings spaced in between the gemstones. Mm -hmm. They have been Mobius. Right. And you can see that they're crossing over. Yes. That's because like, they've been Mobius. So when they're actually sort of trapped inside, in between those jump rings, um, sorry, gemstones, they hold that position uh, so it you. just gives it a little bit of texture um, and the larger the jump rings that's a really good example the more you can do mm -hmm. so you can really sort of do a really full mobius if not you can just do a couple so on the necklace that we've got so here so it's a full mobius a 360 degree you can swirl. actually if you do enough you can actually do like a little mobius ball right. if you keep going with them but you have to again in a diameter so you have to have a larger jump ring right because you're going to be putting jump rings into jump rings into jump rings okay so you're filling that in a diameter i'm up. intrigued so it's really, really simple, but there is, again, there is a way to go wrong with it. So preparation wise, you should have three open jump rings. One, and I've got some colored ones here. So I'm gonna actually do this on the larger one first and then show you on the smaller ones. Okay. So I've got one, two, three. So you have one closed and then one open and one open. And mm -hmm. all you're gonna do is go through that jump ring. Right. And close it. So that's a one in one at the moment. One in one at the moment. But what you're gonna do is if you notice, I'm still holding it in my hand. Yep. Now I am right-handed, so I tend to, I use my um, right hand as my sort of control hand, almost like a vice. So I know that I now place this back down. So I'm gonna place it back down the way I picked it up. So I'm placing that jump ring down and then that one like that. It mm -hmm. sounds silly, but there's a reason for it. When you do that, that's your Mobius. Oh. Two jump rings is all you need for a Mobius. They okay. just Mobius around each other. That is what is in the necklace that we were showing a moment ago in between the jump rings. Uh, Quite a few people wear those as wedding bands. Yeah, wedding they? bands. Um, you can do like a trilogy of them. Mm -hmm. So again, you can have different colours. So that is what is inside in between those gemstones. Right. And that's what's giving that texture, that cross look. Okay. They just repeat the same thing. Right. So you take another jump ring. You place it through both the jump rings that you've got there. Right. So you collect them both. So notice I'm picking it up the exact same way. Mm -hmm. Close. And again, I put it down the exact same way. So let it sit so it goes back like that and drop that. So that's a triple. And that's your triple. Oh, it's so easy. Now what can happen, as I said about it going wrong, is if your jump ring flips over or you put it down wrong, let me just put that together. And I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera, but can, can you see how it's not sitting mm. quite right? It's not the perfect shape, it's is not, it? Yeah, it's not quite nestled the way it was before. So if you ever look at it and think that's not looking right, just turn that top jump ring over. Just now it looks perfect. Now it looks right. So you can see, uh. again, it's very simple, but you can go wrong with yes. it because if you didn't pick that up and then you added your next jump ring, then it would be off. Right, I've got you. So it's that's why I'm always like, notice how I put it down exactly how I pick it up. So I'll do it again now in multicolour for you. I mean, I, I just play. I just play and do a few of the techniques that uh, Laura's shown you yeah. today. When you get your jump rings home, if you're going to start Well, it. I'm going to talk very quickly in a moment just how about the ring that I've got there because that is a combination of the two techniques we've done today. Okay. So it's literally a Mobius ring, in, a Mobius in the centre. Should I turn it for you to see? 
It's almost like a lover's knot, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's a good description, actually. So you can see the Mobius is in the centre there. And what I've done is I've used um, a three mil in a diameter, which is like the smallest, really. Um, and I've just done a two in one. And do you know what? If your weight fluctuates, you lose weight, gain weight, whatever, and you need normally with standard rings to have your mm -hmm. rings resized, you just add an extra. You just take an extra, yeah, exactly. We'll it's really easy, yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah, I never thought of that. Yeah. Um, and again, this I'll, I'll actually show you just to show you how easy this is. I'll um, show you. You can just literally almost roll that so it goes on. And there's your jump. And that I would imagine is really, really comfortable. Yeah, you don't, even, like you don't it even know you're wearing it. With you. yeah. yeah. So you can see how easy that is to wear. So again, that's just a mixture. And again, take it off really easy. Um, and that's just a mixture of your two techniques. So I'll show you it on the smaller. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I've got my silver jump ring there, I'm taking my gold one now. And this is about the same size as the centre of that ring, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's really? the same yeah. size, yeah. This is the seven mil in a diameter, right. okay, which means it would be a nine mil outer. Um, but we do list them by their inner diameter. Right. So I'm just going to pick that up and close. Now, if you don't close it properly, so this is where it's important to make sure you hold it properly with your pliers, place it back down. I always tend to just do that. Perfect. Take my next one, which I did prepare. And this is why preparation helps, because right. if they're all open, yep. it saves time. And then straight through both of them, pick them up. And do you know what? It's a hobby and a craft that is noise free. Yeah. You know, I haven't got any noisy machinery or any flames no, or anything like that to it's worry about. Quite therapeutic. And there you go. That's a triple color one. So you can see that there. That's beautiful, I love it. And because it's got a larger diameter, so if this was done on, say, maybe a four mil in a diameter, you'd probably only get three. But the, my general rule of thinking is, <coughs> um, I won't go into aspect ratio because it can be a bit intimidating, but it's basically an average. A lot of weaves will say it takes an aspect ratio, which is the average ring size. So a Byzantine, for example, is a 4.5. Mm -hmm. I ran it down to a 4 one using Jewelry Maker. It's done by the wire thickness okay. and the inner diameter. So my general rule of thinking now is if it's like a four mil jump ring and they're a one mil wire, I'm gonna get four jump rings in that it. That makes sense. That's how I think yeah. of it. So if I'm doing something like a six in one. You can get six in. Well, I know it's not going to work on a four mil jump ring. Right, yeah, yeah. So if you've got a seven mil, you know that it would. So it's just think, that's my little general rule of thinking. It's a one mil wire and a four mil diameter, and I'm going to get four jump rings through. It, it makes absolute sense. And I must admit, I mean, although I've been a jewellery kind of person for years and really into jewellery and stuff, I've never actually looked into making it. I've designed it, but yeah. I've never ha actually made it. I think you'd be it. great at this. I think I'd love it. It's very therapeutic. Um, and again, the necklace that we've got here is again another combination of Mobius links and then connected with two jump rings that aren't Mobius and by Mobius I mean going through each other so I've got two that are Mobius and then two that are not and that's the whole of that chain well uh, the silver one sorry I think he'll agree in the last what half an hour or so we've seen a lovely introduction into chain mail uh, it's something that isn't very expensive to get into um, Laura you said you only need basically two was it flat nose pliers but yeah chain nose or, or flat nose um, it's good if you've got at least one chain nose just because it tapers right but two of these or a pair of these and flat nose and about five pound a pair something like that yeah they're very uh, on jewelry maker you find them okay and of course all the jump rings you'll find on jewelry yeah. maker as well as well as all sorts of other things to make at home, whether it's gemstones, whether it's jump rings, whatever it might be. Jewelry Maker, of course, is here every single day on Channel 674 on Sky and 72 on Preview. And they're live every day, even Saturdays and Sundays mm. between 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. Uh, and you can watch shows back as well on the website and you can just have a little rummage. I mean, I wouldn't know where to go and buy jump rings. No. I wouldn't have a clue no. if, in High Street. No. Um, whereas you go to our website, jewelrymaker.com and it's all there for yeah. you and of course it's not just about jewelry maker we've got um, lots of channels doing lots of different hobbies hobby maker is a generic uh, card making and generic hobby channel which is fantastic mm -hmm. and that's on sky and freeview as well that's on between one and uh, eight every single day seven days a week and of course we've got sewing street which is on at the same time as jewelry maker but on different channels and that's on between eight and one every day of the week as well. So whether you're into soft crafts, whether you're into jewelry making, or whether you're into card making, mm. or anything else, uh, Gemporia Craft, which is what we are as those three channels, is the place it's to come to. It's got you covered. It? It's got yeah. you covered. <laughs> well, we'll see you again soon on Jewelry Thank Maker you. then. Yeah. Thank you, Laura. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on Hobby Maker very soon. I'm Dave Bradford, that's Laura Binding, and enjoy your chain map.